Welcome back everyone. Today we'll talk about optical character recognition from images using G Image Reader on Windows. Please subscribe to get updates on new videos and help this channel grow. So the first thing we want to do is actually go get G Image Reader for Windows. You can find G Image Reader on the GitHub uh, website, so github.com and Manizandro, uh, G Image Reader. So um, this is where the source code for G Image Reader is located, but you don't have to know anything about compiling source or coding or anything like that. All we need to do is uh, go to the website, uh, go to this uh, page here, which I'll have in the link below, scroll down, and then you can see the screenshot of it and uh, installation. So we have a couple different options here. Uh, we have the source installation. If you want to build this package yourself, if you know about programming, you can download the source. Uh, what we're going to be using today is the Windows downloads, the download from the releases page. And then they also have uh, different versions for different versions of Linux. OK, um, there's also apparently support. And uh, of course, you can contribute if you if you can code, you can uh, uh, do a pull request to them. So let's go for Windows because we're on Windows here and go to the releases page. Then we have G image reader and the current version is 3.3.1. OK, which is actually relatively new uh, from this year, uh, July. And OK, so what we need to do is go down and if you're on Windows, um, there are a couple different options, but basically uh, what you're going to want is uh, anything with a .exe on the end. And most likely, um, if you're watching this, if you don't know what to download, most likely if you're on a newer computer, uh, G Image Reader 3.3.1 Qt5 x86 64 is the one that you're going to want. So um, if you don't know which one to choose, choose this one. OK, x86 64. OK, everything else um, uh, basically is source code or for the Linux uh, version. OK, so once we download that and I already have it downloaded here, so I'm going to double click on it to install pretty much like normal. Uh, do you want to allow this app uh, to make changes to your device? Yes. And then welcome to the uh, installer, click next. And then this is the uh, GNU uh, license. So you might want to take a look at that. GNU licenses are interesting, but that's a different uh, topic. The version that you want standard will install the English interface and then international will have translations. And as far as I understand, there's quite a few different languages uh, this app has been translated in. So if you want something other than English, install the international package. This isn't for the translations of um, uh, the documents. This is not lang document languages. This is for the interface for the program. Okay, So I'm going to keep English. Click Next. Install for everyone on this computer. Next. Uh, the location that you want to install on. So install. So now we're installing and this will install the app plus um, basically Tesseract uh, as the back end. OK, then click Finish. So now uh, we have the app running or we have the app installed so we can go to Start Menu and G Image Reader. OK, so now we have um, uh, G image reader app running. I'm going to minimize this so you can see it a little bit better. We have G image reader app running. Now G image reader uh, is is interesting for a few reasons. Um, but uh, what I'll talk about first is how we can actually get a file into here. So there's files. And if you click the down arrow, you have the paste option and you have the take screenshot option. OK, so Imagine that you had two screens and you have a document on one screen and you need to OCR that document. Um, it was a, a, a scan from a scanner, uh, an old book or something like that. Uh, as you're going through, you need to um, uh, take a screenshot or copy and paste a screenshot of that image into uh, G Image Reader. OK, and then they also have the acquire tab. And this is where you can set up for scanning documents. I don't have a scanner installed, but um, you can scan directly to G Image Reader. So if you are uh, taking some some documents, uh, physical document, trying to scan it, um, I would recommend this way. Or you can copy and paste, which is also relatively easy. Now, I have um, a Korean 
uh, uh, PDF. I'll just open that up. It's a Korean PDF of a uh, paper. Now, this PDF itself um, doesn't need OCR because, as you can see, I can select the text. This is not an image, and it's a, let's say, correctly made uh, uh, PDF. Um, this PDF, however, does have uh, Korean and English. It's formatted in a little bit of a complicated way, you know, two column, like one column uh, with multiple languages and then two columns, but um, uh, not not really too bad because the text is fairly clear, a little bit fuzzy, um, at least to me, but uh, fairly clear. The only complicated thing are maybe these headers, uh, the footer, uh, and then possibly the columns. Okay, so this is the document that I have, and uh, I've already created a screenshot of that document. Also, you can see the screenshot is a little bit fuzzy, but I think if you scale it up, it would probably be a little bit better. Um, so I have a screenshot of this document, and this, I cannot select the text, so this would be a good candidate for OCR because um, I can't select it, so I want to know uh, what this is. Okay. So I have my image, uh, or my, my file that I want to analyze already. Notice I don't have the entire PDF. We didn't have a way to just import the entire PDF uh, into GImage Reader. We're doing uh, scans like one at a time. Okay. Now, because I, my source document is uh, English and Korean, so my source document is English and Korean, you can see it says recognize all English, okay? Um, we also have the uh, OCR mode, but basically right now it's set to only English, okay? So what I need to do first is go to the settings menu and I can click on Manage Languages, and this is where you'll set the languages that you want to try to detect. So there's many different languages. All of these should be um, the same as uh, kind of default Tesseract OCR. I don't know if this program has actually changed the models any, but I don't think so. Um, so here I'm trying to do Korean, okay? And I don't need Korean vertical, so you, uh, Korean can also be written vertically. I don't need that because uh, I know this is a modern document that's not going to have that. So if I click apply, I'm going to get into a problem. So the following files could not be downloaded or removed, failed to create directory for test, rack, uh, test data files. So it's trying to download the test data files, which um, basically is the model of that language that you're trying to uh, detect. So uh, the reason for this is because I have installed this uh, inside a kind of protected system directory uh, and we don't have right permissions to that directory. We don't necessarily want to open up this application as an administrator that does have rights to, to write to that folder. Um, so instead of doing that, I'm going to change the path for the test data. So they even have a hint here. If you don't have right permissions to system folders, you can switch to user paths in the settings. You can, yeah, user paths in the settings. Silos. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm gonna close the uh, test data manager and go to preferences. And then uh, our problem here is C program files, G image reader, share test data. So, um, we don't have write access to this folder, and I don't want to start GImage Reader as administrator um, just to be able to get access to this. So what I'm going to do instead, instead of system-wide paths, we're going to click down and click user paths. So now what this will do is see users Joshua app data local test data. This is for this user. We will store the language definition definitions inside uh, this folder. So it will be, um, let's say, user specific. So if you're sharing this with, uh, let's say, everyone in a group and everyone has their own login, uh, the, the files that you download will only be available to this particular user. You probably want to uh, work on system-wide paths, but if everyone uses either the same account or it's just you, user paths is no problem. Okay, so now we can click OK. Uh, no test tracks languages are available for use. Recognition will not work because we've now moved uh, the path where the test rack language files are available. So click OK. Now we need to go back to manage languages. And then uh, now we don't even have English because English was installed by default. So we need to select English because I have an English document with also Korean. Okay, Hanbuko, enter. Okay, so then we apply. 
And now it's going out and you can say downloading ENG trained data, KOR trained data. So it's downloaded the, the files. So then we click close. And then I'm just going to redetect languages just to make sure. Then, so now we should have the languages that we need installed. Um, you can go back to manage languages anytime and work with any of the, the languages that you want. Remember, these are being downloaded from Tesseract uh, OCR directly, so they're the default trainings on the language. So if you have a very specific uh, book or font, um, it might not work very well. You probably have to make your own uh, trained model, which we'll talk about how to do the training uh, in a different video. Okay. So for now, I need to go back and I have my, um, my document. I'm going to take another screenshot just so you guys can see. Plus, it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to open the snip tool in Windows. Oops. Okay. Uh, I want to get all of this page, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. That looks about right. So from the snip tool, my mode is just a rectangular snip, and then I'm going to do new. And then select what I want. I'm going to leave that number off. And then I have uh, the file copied. Okay. So now if I need, I can just click copy. Uh, I can minimize this. Now back in G image reader, it will recognize that I have something in the clipboard so I can just paste. And now I have my document inside uh, G image reader. Okay. So now I have my pasted one uh, document. So I need to say recognize all English uh, in US or uh, Korean or multilingual. So in this case, we want multilingual because we have um, uh, both English and Korean going on. So I'm going to select that and then now it's uh, I just clicked recognize all English plus Korean. Now it's processing and then we have uh, non moon not exactly correct. So again, I, I would probably retrain this model if I cared about this line. Uh, the second line, let's say mobile eight. Okay, that's okay, but it added a space. Uh, notice I can I can edit this te text directly uh, as I'm working on it, and then uh, hook. Uh, it's not mang. I think that's a bit. So I think that's a little bit off, but uh, close, still close. Uh, Asaw shouldn't have a space. So these little things, it's mostly actually getting spaces and it's really, really close. There's like one, one character off, but then notice what happens here. Um, we have uh, Korean text and then we have an English word inside Korean text. Well, what is this doing? It's uh, understanding the English text inside the Korean um, sentence as a number. Right. So that's not very good. That's not what we want, um, but, you know, uh, uh, better than nothing. So now I can just go in. I can see the, the English text. So I can just type, for example, Bluetooth so I can edit it on the fly and make sure it's OK. And then uh, Giban, correct. And then MMORPG also detected as a number. And then we have uh, I think this was also part of the, the G kind of detected. So it wanted to try to make it Korean. It just, it just couldn't figure out anything. And then we have way, uh, and then I'm missing the second line. So, uh, so I would need to add that in. Okay. Now let's see what it's doing whenever it's just English by itself. So design of Bluetooth based MMORPG game in minutes. Well, that, that worked pretty well. Okay. So the Korean side, uh, there were some things a little bit wrong with it. You kind of see, uh, oh, Sajin. Oh, Sajin is correct. Okay. And it detected that little star there. Uh, and then it thought that this was also Korean. So it came up with numbers. I think that's the issue here. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we start getting into it and the text, um, this was fairly big text, fairly clear. You notice that this um, image, the PDF itself is relatively fuzzy. The image is, I think, even a little bit more fuzzy. Um, once we started getting into the, the smaller text, that's when things really got, um, got to be a problem. So here we have uh, Doa and it's, uh, what, it looks like yo Yoyak. I can't even barely see it. Okay. So, um, it's a bit of a problem whenever you're trying to recognize all, uh, because, um, it's trying to figure out or it's trying to guess which language it's currently looking at, English or Korean. So that's not really what we want. And I can tell you that, uh, it looks like this detection just didn't work at all. Uh, whenever we go to English, it also didn't really work very well. Okay. So, I'd say the, the very clear big stuff worked pretty well. Um, you know, not, not perfectly, uh, especially whenever English was mixed with Korean, but it worked pretty well. Um, so I'm going to go back and instead of detecting all, let's go ahead and just try to detect, uh, Korean. Okay. And it's asking me for a Korean dictionary. So let's go ahead and install that. Okay. No, no, no Korean spelling dictionary. All right. Well, whatever. Um, so I just want to detect only Korean. Now, if I recognize all as Korean, then all of this English is also going to be uh, messed up just like it was before, but we'll probably have better luck, um, uh, with our main text. Um, instead of recognizing all, I want to, um, select just the text that I'm looking for. So here, all I've done is uh, click and drag the text that I'm interested in. And then now it's changed to instead of uh, recognized all, it's recognized selection. And I've already told it that this is Korean. So let me make sure that I'm getting all of that enough space around. Okay, so now I have recognized selection as Korean. And that is way better. I can already tell that's way better. Uh, I think the second character is still wrong, but so, so much better than it was before. Now, the thing about, um, uh, especially PDFs that you'll, you'll process sometimes, you'll get these new line characters. And one nice feature that I like about, uh, um, uh, this tool is, uh, that you can remove spaces, so strip line break breaks on the selected text. So I just select the text and then strip line breaks. And then now we have it basically how we want it again, probably need a period in there. Okay. Um, notice we still have uh, numbers detected instead of the English text. So Bluetooth, MMORPG, anytime a different uh, font was used, it inserted the numbers. So that could be a problem, but it's not used very often. So it's it's probably okay in this case. So now we have a pretty decent looking uh, OCR of the Korean text, even though the quality really isn't very good. Um, uh, but you know, uh, it's not it's not old style Korean or handwritten or anything like that. It is still a, a computer font, so um, fairly clear, uh, which is why we get a pretty good um, uh, uh, OCR. So now let's just uh, go back here and see. We have our next space. Let's select the next line, next paragraph, and then uh, we need to switch to English. I don't think, I don't think English will make too much of a difference, but, uh, yeah, English and then, uh, not perfect, right? So abstract, uh, kind of, and then, uh, with the rapid growth of recent wireless technologies, with the rapid growth of re recent wireless mobile computing application technology and hand held mobile devices kind of struggles struggles a bit. Actually, Korean turned out way better than the English did. I'm not sure if it's because of the font or, or what it is exactly, but Korean turned out way better. And this is where the um, uh, uh, spelling, uh, sorry, dictionary comes in because now we can just right click and uh, fix anything that was uh, probably not handball, <laughs> handheld. Yeah. Okay. So abstract, right? So now we can just right click and fix a bunch of a bunch of these. So I think if um, 
uh, the font was a little bit clearer, maybe, we would probably get a better um, OCR off of this. But that's basically how you do it. So um, and GImage Reader has a lot of really nice features. Uh, what I like about it is that you can actually see the text you're working on as you're, you're working on it. Whenever we were doing something from the command line, we just trans um, uh, OCR'd all the documents. And then whatever result we got, we have to open up both documents and then compare them. This kind of does that for us. Uh, we can select uh, very easily the things that we're actually interested in working with and then really get that text perfect if that's what we're trying to do. Um, again, it might make a difference in your document um, uh, what you're trying to test or what you're trying to detect versus the model that has been trained up for that document. So. Um, I'll, I'll show you in another video how to actually make uh, Tesseract OCR models because if you're doing something, especially something like handwriting, um, this probably won't work very well for you. Uh, it might work okay depending on here, how clear the handwriting is, but um, especially for older documents, uh, it may not work as well just because uh, Tesseract has been trained with uh, basically older books which are also typed. Okay, so. Um, We'll talk about training in a later video. This is how to get started with um, uh, GImage Reader, which I think is a really nice tool, very basic, um, very simple to use. You can get up and uh, up and running fairly quickly. Um, there's different acquisition methods, uh, but I think the, the biggest problem that I see with it right now is that I don't see a way to um, just import, let's say, an entire document or an entire PDF. You will have to um, uh, make uh, screenshots or uh, single page acquisitions on it. But that's kind of the point. This is really made for um, getting the text perfectly converted into OCR. That's why they give this editor here. Ah, one thing I didn't talk about is um, uh, saving the output. So uh, with this output file, while you're working on it, you can either clear the output, don't click that unless you really want to, and then uh, you probably want to save the output and you can save it as a text file. Okay, so this is how you work with the document. Um, this is how you import your screenshots or the images that you're trying to uh, detect the characters on, and then you can basically just have a bunch of pastes uh, OCR them, make sure the OCR is perfect, and then move to the next paste. Okay, um, so that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support lets us focus on making better tutorials for everyone.